you know, it's, I don't know if it's a case of whether or not it's a win or a lose thing. This isn't a game show. Uh, the voice there of former Chelsea, sorry, former Crystal Palace owner Simon Jordan. Um, what I will say about this though, Harry, is that all, all this seemed to happen to Arsenal too much. You know, when, when I think of, I'm of an age when I, I remember Van Persie going, I remember Cesc Fabregas going and Alexis Sanchez going and, you know, and who else is Adebayor leaving the club, Nasri leaving the club. Um, it just continues, doesn't it? And these are all star players here. Whether it's the case of the contract runs down or they want to go on to try and win titles or, or trophies or in the case of Ozil and Aubameyang, it just seems as though that it just hits this big brick wall. It needs to stop. I think you've got to differentiate between the two periods, though, mm -hmm. in the club's kind of development. Because the first group of players you mentioned, the Van Persies, the Fabregas, mm -hmm. the Nasris, even Bakari Sanya, who left the yeah. club on a free, yeah. um, ran his contract down. Those players left the club because the club couldn't match their ambitions. And the reason the club couldn't match their ambitions at those, those times were, were financial. Mm. We know that Arsenal was struggling to pay back the Emirates Stadium. Oh. Arsene Wenger was there trying to kind of keep everybody happy, taking all the pressure from the fans while the club's hierarchy was sitting there counting their millions and hoping that they'd have enough at the end of each month to go and pay back their bank loans. So like I think... Wenger do miracles. Every yeah, day. exactly. And, and Wenger was very good during that period that, you know, he allowed Van Persie to go. He brought in somebody like Olivier Giroud, not up to the same standard, yeah. but could get you over the line uh, and get Arsenal into the Champions League. And the landscape's dramatically changed since then. And since we've kind of freed up some of the finance, Cronkies, since they took full control of the club, have been much more proactive in uh, restructuring debt and allowing Arsenal to be in a place where they can spend. And and then we've gone out and we've got the Ozils and we've got the Aubameyangs. And, and now this is different for me. You know, at that point, it wasn't that Arsenal were mismanaging players. It was that Arsenal just simply couldn't compete with the teams right at the top of the league. Now, though, financially, we're in much better shape. Mm. And now it's a question of attitudes and it's a question of behaviours and it's a question of the relationship that these players have with their manager, with the fans, with the club, and basically a lack of respect. Because I think you could say there's been a lack of respect with with Aubameyang. Mm. You know, he's, he's broken the rules on numerous occasions. I think you could say the same with Ozil. Mm. But I don't think you could say that with Van Persie. You know, he was very clear and, and no, very Van upfront. Van Persie just wanted to go on and win yeah, exactly. the major trophies. And at the time, look, he was the, the reason United went on and, and, and done well under him. Um, with Aubameyang, there seems to be, like you're saying, a big lack of respect. And, and that surprised me because we're talking about the captain of the club as well. And, and again, you see images of Aubameyang last year and the season before that, and it's all smiles. So you kind of wonder, where's this gone wrong? And that's why I asked you at the top of the show, is Arteta to blame in some way? Because something's clearly happened behind the scenes, like you say, that we're unaware of. But it was all so good when Aubameyang was the person scoring the goals to win the FA Cup. When Aubameyang was the guy scoring the goals to win the Community Shield. Everything seemed perfect. And you thought, OK, Aubameyang clearly doesn't want to do this track back and thing, but he's doing it. And now all of a sudden, nothing. I think for me, we needed to clean house. Mm. You know, th this attitude issue, this... Ain't it always been that? Though? Yeah, I mean, it's, it feels it's, like we always... Uh, I always hear Arsenal fans say, we're getting rid of the deadwood. We're getting yeah, rid of the deadwood. How many? How much deadwood did you have? But that, that's indicative <laughs> of how badly we've recruited over yeah, the last few yeah. years. And I'm not saying that Aubameyang was a bad signing. Overall, he was a good signing. And mm. the same probably with Mesut Ozil as well. Mm. But there comes a point where you need to change the culture at the football club. If you ask any Arsenal fan over the last 10 years, what the biggest fundamental problem has been, they'll say it's the culture. They'll say that it's a comfort zone. They'll say that mm. people come there, get big pay packets and don't really care, nor are they pushed to their limits, nor are they pushed to succeed. And I think what we're seeing now at Arsenal is somebody who's come in like Mikel Arteta and is having to clean house. Is there more cleaning needed? Like, not, right much now, not much more. Not much more. Any players, and I don't know if you're comfortable mentioning them or not, but are there any other players who think, right, they... Just him now. He's got to go as well. Like Jack is the one everyone seems to talk about, but he seems to have improved his attitude. Still gets sent off, but in terms of his attitude, it's not the worst anymore. Is there anyone else? Yeah, I think. Well, we've moved Kolasinac on. Yeah, I think he yeah. was one of those. Mm -hmm. I think that Jack probably needs to go at some point as yeah. well. But what I would say though, Addy, is we always look at Mikel Arteta, and a lot of people are pointing the finger at Mikel Arteta mm. with regards to Aubameyang and with regards to Ozil. Look what happened with with, with Granit Xhaka. You could argue that what happened with him and the fans was, was worse, worse and he's come back. Mm. So because he's displayed the right attitude, he's come back into the team. 
We can argue all day about whether he's good enough or not. That's a big debate that people have. But ultimately, his attitude has been right. Mm. You know, and, and, and Nicolas Pepe as well, you know, uh, he was criticised by Arteta last season. People thought that was the end of him. And then at the... Does the, he still play for Arsenal? Yeah, he does. Okay. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Just checking but he, forgot all about him. <laughs> in, in the second half of last season, though, he was fantastic. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that there is room under Mikel Arteta that if you do fix up, you can work your way back into the team. Mm. But unfortunately, somebody had to come in and clean house. And I read a really good quote in The Athletic this week that's been doing the rounds on social media. I think it's fantastic. How many Arsenal fans would have appointed Arsene Wenger? None. How many would have thought that Thierry Henry was going to be better than Nicolas Anelka when we sold him? None. Mm. The success of this club from the 1930s right through to now has been based on giving people autonomy to make big decisions yeah. that other people wouldn't make. Mm. And sometimes you have to stand back and trust that what they're doing is right. And only at the end of the season will we know if it was the right call or not. No, I'm, you know, I'm with you. I, th I think someone needs to come in and crack the whip. And look, if, if that is Arteta, and if Arteta sort of gets the the anger for some Arsenal fans, like, why are you doing this when we've got nothing up front? Then so be it. It needs to happen. Um, and, and I was speaking to Rory Jennings about this yesterday. For him to be kicked out like this from Arsenal Football Club, it's a lot more than though he just turned up late one day from going to see his mum. It, it's more than that. Again, Absolutely. You know what I mean? It will come out eventually, I, I guess. Someone will probably spill the beans on it. But that doesn't happen if you're Aubameyang, um, and you've just done that. You know I mean, Aubameyang will have a bit of credit in the bank because he is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, the best player at the club, the world-class player. He's done a lot more. And I don't think you can have young players like Saka, Odegaard, Emil Smith-Rowe, um, and the rest coming through as well, Nuno Tavares, all those players coming through, and for them to see that the captain's getting away with doing X, Y, and Z all the time. And I think what Arteta's done, it might harm him this season because I don't think there's enough up front to get Champions League football. But in the long run, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, and, that, and that's the key point, right? If you're embarking on this long-term strategy of developing mm -hmm. young players, hoping that you've got together this core group of youngsters who are very talented, clearly, but need to develop all at the same time. And if they all click at the same moment, mm -hmm. that's when you've got yourself a team, right? That's obviously the strategy that Arsenal have decided to take. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not is another matter, but that's clearly what they're doing. So if you allow players like Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to make a mockery mm. of what you're doing and make a mockery of the values at a football club, and, and it's not just personal to Aubameyang, it could be anyone, you're ultimately showing those young players that that's acceptable and that's allowed. And what Mikel Arteta has done, he's nipped that in the bud and he said, no, it's not happening. How random, though, that it's happened to the two players that you desperately wanted to keep. I remember when the contracts were announced, there was this, you know, this especially with Aubameyang, that TikTok like sand timer thing. It's like, oh God, Abamia and stay and look at this and Urzel. How random it happens with that when you've actually given some money and that was what Arsenal were accused of not doing before, not paying for the big wages. You've actually done it, 300, 350 grand, whatever it is, and they both decided to almost down tools a bit and have bad attitudes. It's one of the big misconceptions in football, though, that you should pay somebody for what they've done as mm. opposed to what they're going to do. Interesting. And when you look at Ozil and Aubameyang, it mm. was clear at the time they got those contracts that the only way really was down. They were both <laughs> yeah. at their absolute peaks, right? Yeah. The reason we were all so desperate to see Mesut Ozil stay, outside of him being a very good footballer, was because Alexis Sanchez was leaving. Mm. And those two were the world-class talents that we had Genuine. that dragged us yeah. over the line when we had nothing else. Mm. So you've lost one. We have to panic. We can't lose the other. Yeah. Imagine the meltdown had we lost the other. Ooh. And with Aubameyang, he's just pretty much single-handedly won you the FA Cup. Mm. So you have to keep him as well. But what do those two periods have in common? Arsenal were poor overall. Mm. So in a time of, of need, when you're struggling, when you're on your knees, yeah. you need some beacon of positivity. And although at the time it felt like the right thing to do, hindsight gives us the benefit of looking back and saying, actually... We paid them too much money and we paid them for what they'd done previously and not necessarily what they were going to do going forward. Indeed. All right, you're listening to the social.